You can see how the game looks right now in its alpha state. It offers a character selection screen, with only one character for now, skill upgrades, level upgrades that give you the stat buffs like in Brotato, shops that let you buy perks, sanctums that give you the choice to accept a buff for some debuff, augments, much like those in low arena game mode, six different zones, each with their own effects, current zone floor map inspired by Slade Aspire, and a boss fight. But before I got it to this point, I had to prototype. This was the first prototype, or the infdev version of my game. The goal of it was to see whether I can code the game, and I wanted to make it without having to worry too much about the architectural choices I make along the way. In other words, it barely held together by tight coupling using absolute path for every single node, and it was just not scalable at all. The first thing I did when remaking the codebase was to change the inheritance approach with most of the nodes to something called composition. This means that instead of using a base class that the other nodes inherit their functionality from, like let's say base unit class, and that its children like player, enemy 1, enemy 2, who all need to override the methods provided by the parent class, therefore implementing them in some way, I made classes for components that I can just add to specific units as a sort of an upgrade or a module that they can use. This makes the code way more usable and scalable, since every unit is most likely going to have a health value of some kind. I just need to instantiate the health component seen as its child and it will work. The basic structure for most components is as follows. You pick a type of node whose functionalities you might need. For most values, simple node will be enough. You give it a script and implement the logic. If you have other scripts or components that too are the children of the same parent that will require this node, you can just reference it using an export annotation. The same applies for the actual parent, which will work as a sort of a glue that manages those components. Another possibility is to register metadata in the parent using set meta function and putting the component node as a parameter for easy access from nodes that are not the parent node. Here is how my player manager and enemy controller look like. As you can see, it's just a bunch of nodes that are all called components, and even the enemy uses some of them. For example, the enemy will drop golden experience upon death, but the player won't, so I won't add that component to the player. The same way, if I have an enemy that can't shoot, I just won't add the shooting component to it. And as for the parents, I did say that they manage the components, so in the case of player, the input is read in the process function, but it strictly calls the methods provided by the components. For example, the movement. For the enemies, all the decision logic is put into the manager class. By the way, if you want to learn more about this approach, check out Firebelly's games and their video on using composition to make more scalable games in Godot. The link is in the description. But remember that using composition for everything is not always the right answer. In the case of effects that are triggered on hit or on round end or on anything else really, I made the use of inheritance by making sure that all of my effectors for the perk items and buffs inherit from effector base class, so that I don't have to make a mistake when spelling the method. Since GDScript is a dynamically taped language, you could just make a smaller class for specific perks that will have method of the same name and just know as a developer that you can call some methods from the node, but I prefer it this way. Anyway, to showcase how this effector is utilized in the game, let's take a look at the hurtbox component. If the parent isn't player manager, in other words, it's an enemy, then we call on hit from the player manager, and it will propagate this call to its items that will check if they have an effector scene attached to them and call the method. Another important thing I want to quickly go over is are the stats for the units. For this, I recommend reading this post by Krizarel. It is made for Unity, but it can easily be transformed to work for GDScript. It's a very good system for handling unit stats. But if you want to learn more, go read his post or watch his videos here on YouTube. The reason why I briefly mentioned stats and effector class is that I want to quickly mention resource class in Godot. In my project, I use it for so many things, items, character stats, and their scaling, augments, abilities, shrines, you name it. Basically, whenever you have some data that you know won't change during the playing and just needs to be loaded and then the values will be used in some way, resources are one of the ways to go. In the case of perks I mentioned that can have special effects, here's how the resource class looks like. Keep in mind that you need to implement the init method and provide default values, otherwise you're going to run into some nasty errors that might be problematic to spot. As I mentioned with the effector scenes, you can add your scene files onto the resources as a variable. But when you give an item to the player, you need to instantiate the scene and add it to your tree if you want to access its methods. In the case of my player abilities, the player manager has four ability components, each with their own ability resource, imp map action, which is just the name of the action that will use the ability, and that ability's own extra ability haste. For example, Sona in League of Legends has her base cooldown reduced whenever she gains a stack for her passive, and this way you can achieve cooldowns for specific variables or abilities. 
Anyway, the ability component has a method that loads the ability and adds its effect to scene as a child of itself, thus providing a reference to the parent manager node. As for the UI of the game, I mostly utilize themes and styles. You can pretty easily make the UI for your good old games look better by getting some assets online, and in the case of my skill cards, you just need to create a new style of stylebox texture and you play around with the texture margins and subregion. Keep in mind that if you have pixel art assets, you need to change the filter underneath the texture option on the given node from linear to nearest neighbor. The asset I'm using was made by Kenny, and it's called Fantasy UI Borders. One quick note for whenever you're prototyping in Godot, just use Polygon 2D nodes to create simple shapes for your enemies. It's insanely fast and doesn't have to look all that bad in my opinion. If you want to spice it up, just add a world environment node and for the 2D games, change your background mode to canvas, tone mapping to whatever looks like the best for your game, and play around with the glow and other adjustments. Keep in mind that your colors need to use the raw option, since I think by default the value has to be higher than 1 in order for it to glow, which you can't get using the standard RGB. Also, for shadows, just add a light or clue to your notes. Another quick tip will whatever, in the case of animations using code, try utilizing tweens. For example, in the main menu of my game, you can show more information about the character you're playing by pressing X on your keyboard, which makes the information tab visible and changes its scale like so. The game currently offers much more content than talked about in the detail in this video, but the fact is that I didn't record anything while coding, and it makes writing the script for this video a mess. As such, I recommend trying the game for yourself over on Ditch.io, and I will go over more specific mechanics like Slay the Spiral World generation or audio management or saving and loading player data in the future, once I actually make them work better. But anyways, thank you so much for watching up until this point, and if you're interested in more devlogs about the game, stay tuned for more videos coming up, and have a good one. Bye bye.